Good morning. It's good to be here again. It's good to be in a new year and the changes. To some people's hair grow gray, gray and some uh, even get white. And that's the way it goes from one year to the other. Some new faces grow up or some children get born into the families and that is always good. Good to see and good to hear. And, uh, but most of all, it's uh, good to see having baptism, uh, baptismals and we have uh, the youth here and they sing for us and, and they, we know that they love the Lord and all that is uh, very good. And I uh, always love to see the youth here in front. I love to see them walking and uh, living for the Lord. It's uh, always uh, very good. As I uh, was looking into uh, this message today, then I came across a poem. I want to read that first, and then we will go into the message. But the poem says like this, A new year, a new beginning. The old year ends, a new begins, with pages clean and new. And what is written on each page will now depend on you. You can't relive the year that's past, erasing every wrong, for once a year or day is spent, it is forever gone. But don't give up in dark despair. If you have failed some tasks, seek God's forgiveness and resolve henceforth to do your best. Resolve each precious day to do things good and kind and pure. Though days and years may pass away, these things shall still endure. <clears throat> you know not where your path may lead, nor what's beyond the hill, but know that God walks at your side if you will do his will. All things are possible with God, though days be bright or dim, so do your best and know that you can leave the rest to God, our outer, our outer unknown. So this, uh, this poem brought me to the message where we'll look in today. And what usually is uh, happening in a new year, we look back and what has uh, happened, what has been said, what has been done, what have we uh, gone through. And we know that some uh, people that were here last year, they are not with us anymore. And that happens each year. And so we don't know who is next one, what will not be here in 2024. But uh, that's all normal, that happens. And, uh, but all those things that we do, it's important that we do it, that we can uh, rejoice to see the day coming that we will pass away here as well. Revelations 20 verse uh, 12, that says like this, and I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. The books were opened. People were judged according to the books. The poem that I read it says, says that there's pages new, clean, and what will be written on and that will depend on us now. And so, we, in other words, we have a new book today, and it's clean, and it's nice, uh, neat. What will it look like in a year from now? If somebody else will take it and read it, will we be okay if somebody else will look through the pages, what we have done or what we have taught or what we had uh, said or what uh, relationships we have built up or what we have uh, torn down. The reflection of the past year and encouragement for the new year, that's the title of the message. If we uh, look back at what, what has been uh, done or what have we done, we will see some areas that we wish we had done, uh, we had made different uh, decisions 
or we had said, said it something else, or that we had, should have done it somehow differently. But that is all written down, that's all past, we cannot change that. But we can go to God and we can ask Him to lead and direct and guide us. Many people, they start, and, and, and when it comes to New Year, they, they make new commitments, this is what they want for the next year. But there's many people, when, when January is passed, then they have forgotten what they have put in or what, what, what their goal was when the new year started. My wish is that we all, when we make uh, these new re resolutions or that we put new goals for our life for 2023, that we will not just make those goals in, in, uh, uh, for our desires or for that should look, like, look good, but that we will do it so that we will grow closer to the Lord and that the Lord can use us uh, according to His will. Uh, a reflection of the past year, as a new year begins, we should be reminded of the fact that we are one year closer to the day of our passing or of our death. We are one year closer or the day the Lord will return, or the day when we shall stand before the Lord in judgment. We are one year closer to that day. Second Corinthians 5 verse 10, it says, we, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. It has to do with what we do. We must all, it says, there's none accepted or excluded. We all will appear before the judgment seat. Jesus Christ knows our hearts, knows our attentions, and he knows what is there. We are one year closer to that day when we will hear, come you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom of the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. There was a kingdom prepared for us before the world had, the, had this foundation. Then there was this kingdom prepared that we should inherit. And, and the days come, the day come closer when we will be called here, come, you are blessed. You, you have your inheritance here, here now, receive it. Or we will hear the opposite and say, depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, not for humankind, not for people that says it's prepared for the devil and his angels. But if we neglect the salvation of Jesus, then those are the words that will be said. <clears throat> Since we are one year closer to that day when our final destiny will be forever determined, let us use this opportunity or let us look into our own lives and, and, and provoke us uh, to provoke our thinking as to how we have used this past year, to encourage us for the coming year to use our time wisely what is left for us. There's time left for us, there's counted, the time is set for us. If it will be before Jesus comes or it will be in that day when Jesus comes, but the there's a time what is set aside for us and that we will use the time wisely what is set aside. So that, let's begin with some questions and, and ask us, have we grown spiritually uh, in the past year? Has our relationship with God in Christ improved? What would we say if somebody would come to us and ask us this question? Would we have an answer ready Yes, it has. I know where I got boosted in my spiritual life. Or would we just kind of hang in the head down 
I wish I had grown more than I did. Have we drawn near to God? Hebrew 10 verse 22 says, Let us draw nigh with, it, with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And with the pure water, we would say uh, with word of God or with our relationship with God or communication with God. Knowing in our minds that a closely relationship depends upon good communications. It doesn't come from self, from itself. The communication will be put into or what the relationship will be put into, that's what will come out of it. Have we been faithful in listening to God through his word when we read it? Another year has gone by so fast. Did we spend time in the word of God in this past year? Well, I think we all would say, yes, we have read the word. Yes, we, we took the Bible to us and we looked into it and we read it. And some of us would say, yes, we have read through the whole Bible. Some of us would say, yes, we have read here and there. Every day we have read two or three chapters. That would be different from one, another, one to another. But if not, can we honestly say that we are taking our relationship with God seriously? If we, if we have not time for the word of God, then I ask myself, the time that I spend with God or with the word of God, is that a building? Or is it just, this is what I do, this is what somebody has told me, or this is what other people do, uh, or the uh, people what come to our church, that's what they say, and then I will do that too. What is my motivation for that? Have you been steadfast in talking to God through prayer. Any effective communications requires a two-way street. Our relationship to God, it, it requires a two-way street, reading and praying. Therefore, fer fervent Bible study should be joined with fervent prayer. Has our degree of prayerfulness increased or decreased this year? And some, some of us would probably say, yes, it has definitely increased. But there could be that some of us would say, uh, I don't know if it has increased. I wish it has not decreased. Has our, relas has our relationship with brethren improved? Do we love our brotherhood more than we did a year ago? 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 9 says, But concerning brotherly love, you have no need that I should write, write to you. For you're, you yourself are taught by God to love one another. That is something that we know. That is not something that I should teach you or should talk about. But how is it? Verse 10 it says, And indeed you do so, Toward all the brethren who are in Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more. That's Paul's desire. Uh, he knows that the brethren, they do that. But then, and, and, and end of verse 10, he, he says, I urge you to do it more and more. Not just staying there, what you have done. You should increase. Have we increased in our brotherly love? Love, have we made an effort what we should have done? Are we any closer to one another than we were a year ago? Have we been in, in the homes of brethren? That is where the closeness can be built up. We can do it in church, in a brotherhood meeting, or wherever we meet, we can do that there too. But have we had somebody in our homes? Well, I would say, yes, we do. We have a list that says this Sunday is my Sunday to have somebody in their home. Oh, that's not all. What that's not what I was thinking of. It is a special time with one another. Do we know who our brethren are? Do we know who they are? Know we their their names? Each year brings new members into family or the family of God. Have we made the effort to know who that uh, who that is? 
or that we know them? Have we practiced hospitality? Is that something that we have done in the last year? I would say, yes, we do that. But how do we feel when these questions come directly to us? How do we feel about that? Yes, we can do it, go two ways, uh, to think of two ways that we would bury ourselves and think, oh, I have just done not nearly enough. Or we could uh, just be uh, neglecting that and say, oh, somebody else will do that and I will do when I have time. We could look at two ways at that. <clears throat> or the other, the other thing, has our relationship with those in the world improved? People around us, they, they, what look us, what um, see us, what unspeobachten them. Have those people seen that we spend time or that we, we are interested in their lives? <clears throat> the last couple of years I have met way more different people than I had before. And, and that's interesting in how people d d act differently. And you start to talk to them and, and, and they soon start to feel that you care or that you don't care. There are so many different kind of people that come in that sometimes you have said something and you right away notice, or oh, this word I should never, should, shouldn't have said. Because they, they don't know my culture or they don't know exactly what I meant, mean by that. But how is it? Has our relationship with those in the world improved? As people of God, we have an, an important responsibility towards those in the world. Do they feel that? Do they see that? Matthew 3, verse 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. It doesn't say you should be the salt. It doesn't say that uh, I hope you will be. When we are uh, in Jesus Christ, and it says that you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by man. And that's what will happen. If they don't see the salt, then they will trample the Christianity down. They, then they cannot say uh, that it's worth it, living it. And then in verse 14 it says, you are the light of the world. It doesn't say either that you should be. It should be seen that, you are, uh, that Jesus lives in you. It says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill, on a hill, cannot be hidden. And if we are in Jesus Christ, then we shouldn't, should not hide what we have. Nor do, they, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. That wherever we do, or wherever we live, wherever we work, that is, a, we are like, a lamp on a candlestick, or uh, yeah, on a candlestick, that is, that people will see. And what will they see? Let your light so shine before man, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That what they see of us will that bring them to glorify God. That's when God is really glorified or honored of us. It is not as much of that what we do, and that's all good and, and, and fine, yes. But when other people will start glorifying God for that what we have done, that is what God desires to see of us. To be a, to be a positive influence, you are the salt. It will give positive influence when, uh, when other people see us. To be to demonstrate a better way. Are we sure that we have a better way or do we sometimes wonder, is our way, the way we live, is it better than the others? It could come, could come to an end that when we are in a day, we don't know exactly what we should do. 
or where we are at exactly, and, and then we could start to doubt our salvation. But I don't think that we do. But we know, we all have an enemy that wants us to, wants to bring us down, that the light would be covered with whatever, whatever it is. Have we made progress this year in developing meaningful relationships with people in the world? Have we done something to it that we uh, purposely go to somebody that we know that would need help? Have we done something to, to, to build meaningful relationships so that the light of Christ can be seen in our lives? If we just stay home, uh, then it's not so easy. Yeah, then we can uh, live a righteous life and it could be very good at our home. But do we do our utmost to let our light shine so the, so the gospel of Christ can be communicated to them? We, it will usually not work if we will go and preach to somebody that we don't have good relationship with. It usually will not work right. But if we make good connections and have good relationship uh, with them, then all of a sudden the doors will go open and we can uh, communicate the plan of God to them. Or are we like many neighbors in this day and age, living next to each other but not really knowing each other, having forgotten the lost, the neighbors, the lonely, the sick, the widows, well, we, we all know this and we don't forget it. But when we would get this question directly to us, how will we feel? Do we, or, do, we do our utmost to, to let the world know that we have something is worth living for? The question we can ask us is, a year has gone by have we made good use of the time the Lord has given us? Or have we wasted it? Well, I don't think that we have wasted it. But I think it's good if we, we take a little bit of time and ask us this question. Have we improved? Have we grown in our relationship with others, with ourselves, with God, with Jesus Christ? It is like, likely that all of us in some degree have not made good use of the time in the past year. There are some areas we might have fallen back or have failed or have, have just not uh, taken the time what we had at hand. Some some people, uh, there are, or some of us might have spent way too much time on the phone. Or it could very likely be that some, by some people, the phone has the control over the owner. Or, or where did we put our time? Or where, where, how did we use it? How did we spend it? God has given it to us, and he wants us to go uh, to use it wisely. Let's look in the year ahead. Let's uh, draw near to God and Jesus Christ. By having a daily Bible reading of God's living and abiding word, I think that, that I should not uh, lift up because we all know that. We all want that. But my desire is for us all that that would do exactly what Hebrew, Hebrew 12, 4 verse 12 says. For the word of God is quick. It's powerful, it's sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword. For what? It says for piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it is a discerner of our thoughts and intents of the hearts. That that will discern in us, that it will drive us to make right decisions, that will push us or that will help us to understand the way we should live. It says that is what it will do. The word of God is something that will direct, that will guide, that will purify us and it will help us. 
reading in the Old Testament, and like Romans 15 verse 4 says, for whatsoever things we are written aforetime, we are written for our learning. And if we don't read it, then we don't know it. That's why it is important that we do that. That we, through patience and comfort of the scripture, might have hope. That, we, that our hope in God will grow and that we will not grow weary. Because of not reading the Bible, it could very likely push us there that we don't see the importance of the light or the salt that we are. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 says, Now all these things happened to them as example, and they were written for our admonishing upon whom the ends of the ages have come. All this is written down for our benefit. Some people have gone through hard times and it is written down for our benefit. And, and if we take time for it, then it will help us, then it will be a beneficial for us. But if we will not take time for it, then it will not. 2 Timothy 3, verse 14 through 17, it's a very uh, a unique, Unique verses that we all knew by, by memory, probably some of us. It says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Here we see that Timothy has learned it from, from childhood on. He knew the word of God. And, and, and Paul knew that too. And then he says, Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Well, we know that we learn the word of God and, and the parents, they, they they uh, support us, they help us. And it says further in verse 15, And that thou from a child hast known the Holy Scripture, which are able to do what? To make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. That, that's what makes us wise into salvation. Reading the word of God. Spending time. Timothy's grandmother, mother, had spent lots of time with Timothy. And now Paul, Paul can assure that to him that what has happened there is very good. It should continue that way. And it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine of reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That ye, that the man of God may be perfect through thoroughly furnished into all good works. When we read in the Bible, so many times we, we read these words to do good works or that will lead us to good works. But we never should uh, think that way that the good works will lead us to salvation or that that would give us salvation. That is just a part of that we are saved and the good works will, will bring glory to God. And, and lead other people into salvation as well. How to draw near to God in Christ. I read the New Testament, James 1 verse 21. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. Well, this is something that's probably not for us here. We all don't have this filthiness or some of that stuff. But it says, and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Well, then we all might say, it, well, we are saved already. But so that the light can shine, then it is important that we know what it, what it is for us as well. If we just have read it 20 years ago, when I got saved, then it was so meaningful every word that i read and that every time that i read it it just gave me more boost to, to stay there and so today 20 years later when i read it it's still the same word but i have lived it now for for 20 years and it's um, how should i say it it does it doesn't have to work that much on me anymore because now i live it but it's always a boost to stay there. It's always a help to not neglect what I, what I have learned at first. First Peter 2 verse 2 it, uh, that uh, encourages us that we will um, 
have a desire for the word of God like when we would have an empty stomach. <clears throat> How to draw near to God and Christ? By being diligent in prayer. It's all things that we knew what we should do. Hebrews 4 verse 14 through 16. Seeing then that we, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our, conf our professions. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Our Lord can, he knows how we feel. He knows, he can feel with all infirmities, all where we get tempted. He knows the things. He has gone them through. But he, got, uh, he stayed without sin and, and uh, we, so many times we come short. Verse 16 it says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So the better we know it, the, the more we, we have a communication with the word of God or that we read it, the more we are prepared for things to come in our way. Let's be thankful people. That is a very good help for the people around us that will see it. If we are grumpy, unhappy, uh, if things have not gone the way we were thinking or we were planning, if we then are just uh, unhappy like the world is, what, is, what are we doing with our light that we have once uh, so greatly appreciated that we were worthy of seeing that? Uh, sometimes I, I have asked myself or have asked the question this way. I was one of the people that were lost. I was one of them that lived a, a life of sin and, and whatever. But how come that all the others what were my friend at young age, why have they not seen that light? How, what, is, what, what has happened there? There are still, many of them, they are still in the dark where I was. How much do I appreciate it, what I have seen? How much word is it for, to me what, what I have received? Colossians 4 verse 2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. We can, we, if we neglect the prayer, prayer time, then we will probably neglect the thankfulness too. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It says concerning us. We are living, or we have received something it is worth living for. Daniel's custom of praying three times daily would be worthy of consideration. Or compare us with our prayer time and Daniel's prayer time. How, how is our prayer closet or our prayer time? Daniel, he had it. In the good days, he prayed three times daily. When the day came that his task was there, then he, he was able to stand. When he had not done it in his good days, in the days when all were all is goat via, then in the days when the bad came, he would, wouldn't have been able to stand there. So how to come closer to the brethren? Make it a point. Sometimes it is good that we make, make points in our life and make it a point to be interested in other people as well. If we don't make it a point that that is what we want, then it's very likely just 
pushed away from one time to the other, and yes, we have the attention to do that, but it uh, never comes to that. Invite them to a meal. It doesn't have to be a fancy dinner or whatever, a very good one, but make it a point that this is a time of fellowship. Just a simple visit to become better acquainted with them, or knowing each other better, or knowing what, what struggles we have one another. Or by visiting, him, visiting different persons or family each month. It might not always be convenient to have somebody in our home, but then we arrange something that we can come over. Or that we make this po a point that we do that. Not that, that, uh, that it cannot be done differently, but as long as we don't do it, make a point of it, and it's so easy just to push off and, and yes, when somebody will ask us, yes, that's something that we want to do. And yes, we have it in our minds that we will do it, but that it's probably there where it stays. How to get to know non-Christians better? How can we do that? A couple points on that. By having one new neighbor or co-worker in our home each month. Is that something that we have done? I know we haven't. Galatians 6 verse 9 and 10 it says, And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. If we not lose heart we should reap. Then verse 10, Therefore as we have opportunities, and we all would say yes we have opportunities, there are opportunities for us all. Let us do good to all men, to all people, but then it comes back and says to us, especially to those who are of the household of faith. That's where we should focus more. But yes, we should focus on the people around us as well. I know we do visiting among us. We do invite people. And here we, I have a couple more here say, or by visiting one neighbor, new neighbor or co-worker each month, it doesn't have to be a fancy meal I had before. It is amazing how far simple, how far simple hospitality and neighborly kindness can go. Simple things, if we are open for that, God can use that to build meaningful relationships in which opportunities can be created to share the gospel. That is something that, that we can, I think we all have a little bit of room to improve there. And that is my desire for us all too, that we would improve in that. When we look at some of these questions that we have uh, asked us here, some look so simple, but if we do them, they go a long way. Or they will make a big difference if we do them. And they are so simple. Sometimes we, we feel they are so simple that, oh, that is not a big thing. But if we do them, God will bless them. And that the light or the salt will be seen better. To make the kind of lifestyle that is becoming more Christ-like. We, it is not coming of ourselves because we are all human, we are all, have all our flesh along, and sometimes that, is a hinder, that hinders us. To increasing closer relationship with God or brethren in the loss, that is something that will bless our own lives. If that is a, a goal or, or achievement that we strive for, that will blast our life. I read a story a time ago that one brother, he was a Christian for a longer time already, but it seemed like that he had lost courage. He went to the pastor and, and told him how it felt and what is, how it is in his life, and then he said to him, well, go to the, go to the store and buy a pickup load of groceries and go to that and that village and that yard, there's a poor, poor family, and bring it to them, 
and sit there and, and uh, watch what they do with all that stuff. And once you have done that, then gathering all together and, and pray with them. And then you can go home. And, uh, and the brother later uh, confessed it, and then his joy of the word or the joy of his Christianity well, had come back. And so my encouragement for us today is that these things we will not do for, own, for our own benefit. We will not do it because uh, we want to benefit ourselves. But if we bless other people, the blessings, they come back to us. And that is not our benefit, it is a blessing to us. And if we receive blessings, it's, it goes way better for us than it, if it is our smartness. Or now we have done something that is so good and, and, and then pride could come in. And the blessing of the church and the community... To have clear conscience by the next year at this time. If we look at these uh, questions or the opportunities that we have and, and we will put ourselves into it, uh, then we will see the next year that we have surely grown, we have surely used our time wisely. Like James Ford says that uh, the time flies by like a vapor that's fast gone. In, uh, so that we will redeem our time like uh, Ephesians 5, verse 15 and 16 says. Let us uh, go and read those two ver verses there. Ephesians 5, verse 15 and 16, it says like this. See then that ye walk circ circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. That is something that we have to see by ourselves, that we will go wisely, or that we would uh, walk wisely. So, and then in verse 16, it says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Then we would look around, or now that COVID time is over, when COVID time was here, then we looked at them as, as a bad days. Uh, personally, nobody had to suffer uh, except the relationships or, uh, yes. But that we will redeem the time that is left for us. We have, God has given the time to us, and he expects us to, to use it wisely and to, bless other people with the time that we have received. Once again, I will read a poem for, for the closing. A new year, new year beginning. The old year ends, a new year begins. With pages clean and new. And what is written on each page will now depend on you. You can't relive the year that's past, erasing every wrong. For once a year or day is spent, it is forever gone. But don't give up in dark despair. If you have failed some tasks, seek God's forgiveness and resolve, henceforth to do your best. Resolve each precious day to do things good, kind, and pure. Though days and years might pass away, these things shall still, and shall still endure. You know not where your path may lead, nor what's beyond the hill, but know that God walks at, walks at your side if you will do his will. All things are possible with God, though days be bright or dim. So do your best and know that you can leave the rest to God. Thank you and God bless you.